My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer. Other people want to make friends. I just want to make you some money. My job is not just to entertain, but to educate, teach, put it all in context, which it needs. So call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Die by the bond market? Live by the bond market? Hey, that pretty much explains today's rally. Dow surging 550 points. S&P jumping 1.52%. And the NASDAQ gaining 1.57%. That's a major reversal of yesterday's slump. A virtual do-over. As bond yields finally went higher, possibly signaling better times ahead. First, let me say from the outset that this whole obsession with the 10-year Treasury, it's gotten out of control. You know something's wrong when David Faber and I prattle on about bond yields, even as Jeff Bezos launches himself into space. Don't get me wrong. Long-term interest rates have been plummeting for months, and that definitely signals a weaker economy. The tenure doesn't drop to one and change when business is about to boom. That's too low a yield. It's been quite a contrast from the Roaring Twenties scenario we were betting on before the intransigence of tens of million anti-vaxxers sabotaged that narrative. We also know that the Delta variant is rampaging across the world, including vast swaths of America that remain unvaccinated. Many areas are going back to mask mandates, and some companies like Apple have delayed the return of workers to the office. But despite these worries, we have no real sense of where the slowdown might be coming from, that the bonds are signaling. I mean, I'm not seeing it. The rise of this COVID variant is very depressing, but the real story might be just how powerful these vaccines are. And here I'm speaking about Pfizer and Moderna uh, in the face of all this exposure. I'm not speaking about J&J. Consumers aren't canceling their plans, even with horrendous spike in cases and hospitalizations. Why not? Because people who've been vaccinated know they're safe. And people who refuse to get vaccinated clearly aren't that afraid of getting sick. It feels like a profound number of people still believe that COVID amounts to nothing more than a bad flu at worst, despite the staggering death toll so far. But there's something else here at work, something that trumps all this nonsense. And I'm talking about the things that we actually trade. These things, these prices. Yes, the companies we trade. Remember, we're right smack in the middle of the earnings season. Over and over, we've seen an executives find ways to make money. And when that happens, you just can't ignore their success because of the action in bonds. Yep, but a company surprises to the upside, as Chipotle did tonight. Buy, 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 buy. To 2000. It's mighty hard to keep that stock down. When a better-than-expected quarter meets the tenure, the company wins. Unless that company is a bank, the financials are too hostage to interest rates to struggle off the bond market. But everything else? Well, I'm calling it another story. And here's your story. This is what we trade and do. This is what we look at. This is what we figure out on this show. Case in point, HCA, nation's largest hospital chain. This morning, the company reported an awesome number, dramatically raised its forecast, because people who've been immunized are done postponing non-urgent surgeries. That's where the money is. That's the cream. There's a huge backlog of procedures that got delayed by COVID. Stock rallies 31 points, or 14%. There's some real pin action here. I know intuitive surgical rallied hard today, but there's nothing else like a proxy for elective surgery. And it's only up 17% for the year, kind of like the market. I think you can take that one to the back, especially as intuitive expands into a host of different kinds of surgery. Same goes for medical device makers. Medtronic has been held back by hospital COVID fears. I continue to like it. My favorite, though, is AbbVie. The drug company with a 4.5% yield that we own for the Charitable Trust, which you can follow along by joining the ActionLearnsPlus.com club, where I'm giving a talk tomorrow. A little more than two years ago, AbbVie shelled out $63 billion to buy Allergan, the leading medical aesthetics play. Since then, I think AbbVie's been undermanaged. I am a diplomat, this acquisition. But now Allergan's great assets, including Botox, are shining through. Normally, vanity trumps everything. But it doesn't trump death by COVID. Now, though, people who want to look good when they go outside again and don't have the mask, well, at least for now, are coming back. And the numbers could be just humongous. I think Botox use is going to spike gigantically around the globe. Or how about Carnival? The huge cruise line just announced it's putting 65 percent of its ships out to sea by the end of the year. 
This whole group has been crushed, pounded into the surf as the speculators who love these stocks gave up the ghost. Now new buyers are stepping in because orders look very strong. And I think, well, let's just say that stock is going from weak hands that sold it every day to stronger ones. Yesterday, I mentioned that Wells Fargo got the award for most improved student when it reported last week, while Morgan Stanley distanced itself from the pack by becoming more of a risk-free asset gatherer rather than a freewheeling brokerage. Both stocks resumed the rally today. They've got staying power. Buy them. What else? With bond yields moving in the right direction, investors flock to the stocks that stand to benefit from these child tax credit checks, the ones that started hitting the bank accounts last week. For many families, that means a trip to school, right? A trip to store for back to school season, we call it BTS. I think Target's the premier destination for back to school. However, this market's not that discerning, so everything from Costco to Walmart to Dick's and Best Buy, Walmart chart looking good here, uh, and not to mention Bed Bath & Beyond, which we visited today. As I see it, retail remains a coiled spring. As people who've settled into the new homes now need to decorate them, decorate them. I still like William sonoma and R.H. Pantheon. Next up, please, I am urging you not to forget Ford and General Motors. Both companies were hurt by the ongoing semiconductor shortage, but this morning we got some incredible news totally overlooked from Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo, who's been doing everything, to, to, using all her power to beg, to borrow, but not steal, full-featured chips. She signaled that the supply issues are being mitigated. The market seemed pretty oblivious to the news, which is odd because the only thing holding back these two automakers is their lack of new inventory, which is why used car prices have skyrocketed. The new ones are nowhere to be found. Fix the chip shortage and it can boost production. I think the market's just too slow to understand the stubborn energy of Secretary Armando. She's been working tirelessly to solve the supply chain problem, and she indicated today that there's been greater chip availability recently. And look, she's not just some politician. She was originally an unbelievably good venture capitalist. I don't believe she'd risk saying what she said if it weren't true. Oh, these stocks are down so much. I love it. Well, no sure enough about Ford, the 28th, when they report. All right, so the stock jumped 5% today, but that was really a response to the bond market. I think the whole move was about the reversal in bonds. It wouldn't surprise me if we catch some upgrades because better semiconductor availability could translate into, get this, a billion dollars more of earnings power. One last data point, the Mannheim Index, which we use to measure used car prices, finally coming down, which tells me the automakers have been able to boost production. All right, speaking of finally, IBM. How about IBM? I know that it won't ignite a tech rally on its own because of the boring legacy businesses. But anyone who was on the conference call last night heard about a more robust order flow and accelerating sales growth. If it's good for IBM, you better believe it's fabulous for their peers. More on Big Blue later. Was this a simple buy the dip rally? I do think there are people, enough people out there taking their cue from the bond market that it could propel the whole stock complex higher. But the bottom line is that it's the actual sales and earnings numbers from the companies reporting right now that will determine if this move's got staying power, even if the bond market throws us a curveball. So today was a terrific reminder that interest rates can go higher, too, especially when they've come down to ridiculously low levels. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.